Welcome back ladies and gentlemen to Data Science for Everyone. Today we're going to be talking about customizing the toolbar with Bokeh. Let's get started. So first off, let's go on and create up a new file. And so we want this to be something like a, a Bokeh custom uh, toolbar.py. And let's go on and um, start kind of talking about this. First off, we'll talk about maybe moving the bar position, and we'll also maybe start talking about other types of um, uh, customizable features with uh, the sidebar. And let me just show you what the sidebar is to begin with. So from bokeh.plotting, uh, we're going to import figure and show. Now let's also go on and create up some basic data in here. Um, And then let's also go on and create up a basic plot in here. So uh, title here is a, a toolbar customization. Uh, and let's go on and add in our sizing mode in here. And uh, we want to make sure that it's uh, uh, the stretch width. And then our uh, max width in here is going to be 800. And then our, uh, our plot height is going to be uh, 250. So then the next thing that we're going to do, well, let's go on and add in a, uh, a line. So we'll do something like uh, x, y, uh, again, just a basic line. And then uh, let's show everything. Let's run this. And so <clears throat> what we're actually going to be uh, messing with is this toolbar here, right here at the side. Um, and so let's first off just kind of show um, how to maybe uh, hide the bar. OK, so let's say that you just want to completely deactivate it. OK, so let me go here. And uh, let's say. Uh, Toolbar. So if we do p dot uh, toolbar underscore location is equal to none, this is going to just completely um, get rid of the sidebar completely. Okay, um, you don't want any functionality whatsoever. Now another one is kind of um, something like this nice um, kind of like an auto hide type feature. Okay, and I'm just going to go on in here and do toolbar dot auto hide is equal to true and I run this and so here if I it's gone and then um, let me move this over so you don't hide it. and if I just pop over the top of it notice it will automatically hide or it will stay there now uh, one thing is that there's always this um, bokeh uh, link that takes you to the bokeh website okay well and uh, I, maybe maybe you don't want that, okay? Maybe, I, I don't know. I always like to keep it up there to kind of support bokeh. Uh, but maybe, for example, you're using this on your company uh, profile or something like that, or your company's website, and you don't, um, they have rules kind of against that. You can actually turn off that logo. So you can do something like uh, p.toolbar.logo is equal to a none. And run this and notice here it gets rid of uh, that and again I also have the auto hide on um, and so I'm gonna go on and actually uh, comment out uh, both of these um, and we'll start maybe working with some other types of um, <clears throat> some other types of tools okay so another thing that we can do is inside of our inside of our figure function uh, we can go on and actually make um, some tools and we can actually put them in as a list. Uh, and let me go on and we need to go back up to the top here and add in some imports. So from bokeh.models, uh, we're going to import in here a box zoom tool and we also want the pan tool as well as the reset tool. We're going to add those in. Now, 
first things first is we go on and put them in here. So let's do the um, box zoom tool, uh, as well as uh, let's just put in the reset tool for now. Um, I will save these and I'm going to go on and run this. And you can see that they only show up, um, again, the logo is automatically going to be to true, but then it'll only show, for example, our, our box zoom tool, okay, um, which is this, okay, and then our reset, which is automatically resetting. So you can actually customize which, um, which visuals that you actually want, and I'm gonna actually make this a little bit smaller, so um, I don't have to keep moving the page. So let's make this at 400. Uh, and then let's also go on, and we're going to change um, change the tools, okay? So we're going to add in a pan tool, and let's go on and add the pan tool down here. So we can do p dot add uh, tools in here, and we can say uh, pan tool with a uh, uh, dimensions is equal to the width. We can run that, and this will add in one more. This adds in this um, this this width tool, okay. And so again, it will if we uh, want to move stuff around, we can. And I'm not gonna do too much of it, but again, it will it'll help us actually pan everything um, to be able to pan left and right. We can turn that off. And notice I can't pan anything. So if I grab this, I can pan it left and right, uh, but I can't pan up and down. I can only pan left and right. So this is kind of nice, for example, if you have like a time series analysis or something, and then they want to kind of see what's going on further forward or backward if you put in some bounds. Um, so let's go on and actually add in um, some tool tips, okay? We haven't actually uh, gone in and done that a lot. So this is also part of kind of the, the we've done tools themselves, but we haven't added any uh, tool tips. I'm gonna go on and comment that out. Um, and I am actually going to go up here and we're going to delete these. And we want to just grab, whoops, uh, models.tools, we're going to import the hover tool. Uh, and let's, Let's see here, I'm going to also add in uh, p dot circle x, y, uh, size here is gonna be 10. And then, so what we'll do is we'll come up here and we're going to delete, uh, just want to delete the inside here and we're going to grab the hover tool. And again, this is, we'll be using this a lot more. I'm gonna probably make, um, a whole subsection of this series to be about uh, customizing hover tools, uh, but for now we'll just um, we'll just kind of add in this little bit here. So tool uh, tips is going to be something like a data point, and if we use the at sign inside here, we can access our data itself. Okay, so at x um, has the value at y, um, and I'll put a comma there. So then now whenever we run this tooltip, we're actually gonna get something kind of fun. So when we actually get to those, it actually fills in that data for us with data point four has a value of five. Here, uh, data point two has a value of four. Here, uh, data point five has a value of two. So again, we can go through and you can customize these tooltips to have a large amount of data. Uh, we can give them a lot of um, headings, tools, a lot of customized stuff. You can even have it pop up with another picture of some sort, another type of graph. Um, you can go through and have a lot of results with this, and we'll we'll go dive into these deeper later on in the series. So if you guys like this, please comment, subscribe, and click that like button, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.